Radio Algeria International presents International Policy Code, a weekly program hosted by Les Fermazari. Corruption exists in all societies, and some analysts have said that you can minimize it, but never eliminate it anywhere. Corruption is one of the greatest challenges of the contemporary world. It undermines good government, distorts public policy, harms the private sector and hurts the poor. It is deep-rooted in many of the newly industrialized countries, and it's reaching alarming proportions in several countries. Our guest in our program is Kimberly Jones, the president of Global Atlantis. Ms. Kimberly Jones, welcome to our program. Thank you. Before dealing with our today's topic, tell us about Global Atlantis. Yeah, Global Atlantis is a um, strategic consulting company. We're based um, out of the U.S. and Virginia. Um, we also have a satellite office in Serbia. Mm -hmm. And um, we primarily do consulting. Um, one of our main core competencies is anti-corruption. Um, we also, along with that, do governance, procurement management, value chain assessment, mm -hmm. and um, organizational development and leadership development. We also are very strong in local economic development and agricultural development. So mm -hmm. that is our um, main core competencies. My partner is um, Vlastimir Milosevic, and he has um, a long history with um, the UN, UNDP, and USAID, and has extensive history leading um, programs with them. So we've been very fortunate to come together as partners with Global Atlantis. Well, in your first newsletter in Global Atlantis, you spoke about corruption. Could you give us more details? Yeah. Um, we decided to put out a newsletter um, and talk about corruption because, as you said, corruption is one of the um, failing points, we'll say, of... Uh, we chose corruption because it is basically the one of the greatest failings in government, both government and... Um, business, and um, we introduced in our newsletter by saying that throughout time, it's been the greed of men and women that have brought down empires, and this mm -hmm. is true for both government and private enterprise, and um, I was talking with a diplomat yeah. once several years ago yeah. out of Bahrain, and he told me something that I'll never forget, and he said that it's the greed pride and jealousy that drives men to forego their greater mission and vision mm -hmm. for the me vision. Yeah. And when we look at, especially in the Middle East, I guess, but also in Africa, mm -hmm. when, we, when we look around and see people like Gaddafi and the other um, dictators, that's exactly what has happened. Mm. It may have initially, like Gaddafi, he may have initially had a a great vision. He let it all go for a new vision, and um, so it it really has come to that. And then a lot of times, it's the people who build these dictators because they never know. It, there's never it never seems to be a way to stop them. Mm. Well, Ms. Kimberly, are, are women less corrupt than men? I don't know if women are necessarily less corrupt. I mm. think that women tend to be more, possibly be more empathetic, but I think in, over time we've looked back and we've seen women dictators that have been just as um, corrupt as men have been, mm -hmm. uh, the Nelda Marcos um, and others, so... Yeah. I think that the over time it, we've we have to look back and see that, and I think the the thing that's important is putting processes in place in government and in business yeah. that will make sure that corruption cannot happen, and or if it does happen, that it will be identified. Mm. So, so the transparency is the key. 
Yeah, so you mean an anti-corruption strategy exists? Yeah, a corruption strategy exists, exactly. So that in, mm-hmm. in our newsletter, in the first newsletter, we're talking about fighting corruption in post-conflict countries, such as Libya yeah. or eventually maybe Syria. Mm-hmm. But in any country, there needs to be a strategy in place that will allow for some transparency and accountability. What we have, what we're recommending, what we recommend is all these, you know, vital services, mm-hmm. reporting work. Yeah. People are trained to ident- to do their jobs, mm-hmm. that, there's, that there's checks and balances, that yeah. there's systems in place that mm-hmm. are monitored, that there's e mm-hmm. per- that procurement systems that are in place that are electronic. So that there's no, um, mm-hmm. you know, breaking the palm, so to speak, um, and that people can't bribe. The bribery yeah. system is not as easily done as it has been in the past. Well, well Ms. The Kimberly, regulations yeah. are well defined. These are the things that must be done in order to help make sure that corruption is fought. Are developing countries more corrupt than developed countries? Developing countries may be more corrupt only because they don't have the systems in place. Mm -hmm. And they don't have the training. The people don't have the training. But it doesn't only come from the people within the developing countries. It also comes from the companies that come into the developing countries. For, For example, a lot of the companies that come into developing countries have been targeting developing countries and bribing them for contracts. Mm -hmm. And that has been a real problem. And so, and they've been sanctioned for that. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that needs to be, there needs to be a better handle on is how do you prevent those countries or those companies from coming into foreign developing countries and mm-hmm. putting and handing bribes to mm-hmm. those developing countries in order to get their business. That has to stop. Foreign development investments have to be clean. That's very, very important. Mm-hmm. Well, could you give us some forms of corruption? There's many forms of corruption. There's um, mm-hmm. anything, it, it can be as simple as a police officer taking a bribe, which is the lower level, Mm -hmm. and you can't expect those guys to not to be clean when the guy at the top, the president or the prime minister, is doing wrong by stealing from the people, um, maybe skimming off the top, um, taking bribes, or maybe it's a tax collector who's taking skimming off the skimming money off the top there's many different types of um many many different types of bribes Mm -hmm. that can happen it's um election rigging oh election rigging is a huge one if um, somebody wants to that just happened there's a accusation that that just happened in um uganda Mm-hmm. where a um, the election is purportedly the election was rigged so that the income the incumbent was um, reelected so mm-hmm. if that was the case then that election was unfair and the other guy is now arrested and in jail mm-hmm. that w- if that was rigged then that was um, election rigging absolutely Mm-hmm. Um, there are so many different kinds of, um, of problems mm-hmm. in those cases where people will get um, government workers using government u- workers using public funds to benefit themselves. For instance, just a government worker taking a car home mm-hmm. and driving it around after work to take, do their personal business. That is a form of corruption. Well, Ms. Kimberly, uh, my last question. What are the priorities in fighting against corruption? Um, it has to be top-down. 
Mm-hmm. One, of, I think one of the failure points in some government efforts is to try and punish the bottom from the bottom up. It has to be a top-down initiative. The government at the top has to agree that this is going to be a major initiative, and then they have to put the laws in place, the regulations in place, and then they have to make it a top-down government initiative and work from the top of the government all the way down and put it in place and spread it through the government, socialize it through the government and, and spread it that way, and then put it the systems in place to make sure that everything is transparent. Once that happens, then the people will start to see that the government's serious about the initiative, and then they will start to feel better about what's happening. Because you were right in what you said at the beginning, Mm -hmm. is that one of the things that corruption does is it affects the people and impacts them, impacts poverty. Once corruption starts to clean up, poverty will clean up. Because when you take money away from the little guy and put it in your pocket, Mm -hmm. he gets hurt. Once corruption, that money starts flowing where it's supposed to and corruption starts to clean up, you would hope that that money will start to benefit that little guy again. Well, Kimberly Jones, the president of Global Atlantis, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you.